staring down the barrel of a tire like this where you've got good tread on this side and completely bald down into the secondary rubber on the inside chances are you've got some bad ball joints or bad control arms or control arm bushings or both uh, so today we're going to be changing out control arms and ball joints on our 2005 Ford F-150 and I'm going to bring you along for the ride this particular truck is the Lariat so it has a slightly upgraded suspension it's also a four-wheel drive so I'm gonna bring you along and show you how I'm gonna do it here are the tools you're gonna need for this little project you're gonna need a grease gun and some grease you're going to need a 30 millimeter socket a 24 millimeter 22 millimeter 21 those are both 21 little and big I've also got a 19 here a fifth uh, sorry 18 15 13 and this is also a 15 I've got a 15 millimeter box end and open end wrench 22 millimeter 19 millimeter 9 millimeter it would be nice to have an 8 for the grease zerk on the upper control arm but I didn't have an 8 millimeter in my kit uh, a couple socket wrenches a breaker bar an extension a torque wrench vice grips a couple of them and this is for holding the ball joints when you're trying to get the nuts off of them sometimes they spin when they get worn out a crescent wrench I had to use this on the other side of the 30 millimeter because I didn't have a second 30 millimeter wrench an impact is handy but you don't have to have it a couple flat bladed screwdrivers these are for prying so you don't want to use your good screwdrivers I used a couple hammers I try and use as small a hammer as I can whenever I'm hitting uh, parts but these are just to sort of tap things in uh, tap drift pins that sort of thing uh, needle nose pliers a crowbar for setting the shock back in and uh, a drift sorry I don't have my drift out but if you have a drift uh, the, sh the shock bolt generally needs to be drifted out I almost forgot you'll want a ball joint press this one I borrowed from O'Reilly's no charge very nice and I have a long breaker bar long pipe to put on my breaker bar sorry I have an air compressor obviously with the hose a jack stand a jack and I use a little blue cooler to set my brake caliper and my uh, uh, spindle on. We're going to take a look at the write-up the mechanic gave me. I took this truck in for an alignment just to have it checked to see if it was an alignment issue or a ball joint issue and of course they said it was a ball joint issue and so we're looking at uh, up top there the lower ball joints about a hundred bucks a piece and about two hundred dollars a piece to install them then uh, coming down the control arms at about hundred and sixty dollars a piece and about two hundred and fifty dollars a piece to install them so the tire price and the alignment price uh, we might be able to work a little bit on those two but uh, we're definitely going to need a new tire and we're definitely going to need somebody else to align it because I don't have a rack and uh, so we're going to look at uh, probably somewhere in the $400 range uh, when we're said and done. So we'll take a look at what my cost was, yes, my cost was on the pieces and parts that I'm going to use to uh, fix this truck. And here we have our bill from O'Reilly's. So we're looking at $100 a piece for control arms. And we're looking at uh, $32.99 a piece for lower ball joints. We got a total of... 265.96. Let's take a look at the fresh parts we'll be using. We've got upper control arms here. The upper control arms come with a ball joint, upper ball joint there, and new control arm bushings. I don't know if you can buy this ball joint uh, separate and press it out, but uh, by the time you pay for new bushings and do all of this kind of stuff, I think uh, even if you could buy this ball joint by itself and the bushings by themselves, I think you'd be better off just to replace the whole control arm. And then we have our lower ball joints right here. I've installed the grease zerks in both the uppers and lowers, so this required an 8mm, this required a 9mm wrench, and uh, these come with new cotter pins and some circlips here. We're going to start just by taking the old wheel off here and uh, 
I know you're probably not supposed to use a screwdriver to pry that off, but that's how I do it. And then I usually come in here and uh, loosen these just with a breaker bar. The goons at the tire store uh, where I've taken this truck tend to over tighten everything. So I've got my breaker bar. Now I've got a nice long pipe. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how tight they are. I can only imagine being on the side of the road trying to change this son of a bitch. I wouldn't have enough weight in my body to make the uh, crappy little crowbar they give you in the owner's kit to make this work. I mean, I'm out here almost three feet. There we go. So we're just going to loosen all these and we'll take, get the tire off. I always like to put a jack stand back here underneath the frame. I hope you guys can see where that's at. So here's our tire. There's our jack stand. While everything's intact here, I'm going to remove this dust cap, and this requires two hands, so I can't film it. But basically, you just want to get underneath this lip, and this thing comes straight out here. With the dust cap removed, you expose this little 13 millimeter nut here, and that holds uh, this hub assembly to the axle, the four-wheel drive axle back there. So that's going to be important later. Some guys take this axle off back here, way back here. Sorry, there's not much light yet. But uh, they're a 12-sided metric wrench that uh, I don't have in my toolbox. But anyway, this one bolt up here prevents you from a lot of work back there. Next thing we're going to do is drop this brake assembly. We're using an 18 millimeter here. I'm sure there's a uh, standard size that will get that, but there's two bolts on the back of your brake caliper. Uh, one down low and one right up here. And you can see I've moved in my cooler. And what I'm gonna do is take the whole brake assembly and I'm gonna set it over there. You don't wanna put any pressure on the hoses and so forth that supply your brake. So either have a bucket or one of these or plan on taking the whole thing apart which I don't think is a great idea so I'm gonna get this removed and then we'll move to the next step our disc should just slide off there we go get that out of the way now we're getting to the good part here uh, we're gonna start by taking this lower ball joint loose so there's a nut down here we're going to take off. We've got our 24 millimeter on here and <clears throat> our big breaker bar. These are usually pretty tight so uh, I think we just broke it free. Yeah there we go so we'll just work that guy off there. Next bolt I'm going to take off is this one up here on our control arm, upper control arm I'm sorry. It's a 21 millimeter so we'll break it loose. There we go, that one was pretty easy. Last but not least, we need to break our tie rod end loose. And uh, there we go, that wasn't too bad. So I'll zip it the rest of the way off of there. And uh, we'll start breaking joints loose. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this lower ball joint is a bear to do. Um, if you have a fork, you can get it off that way. Uh, some people have a puller, but you know a, a standard Pitman arm puller isn't big enough for that and uh, So I tend to just heat these up and get them off that way So that's the way I'm going to do that one the rest of these shouldn't be a problem. We'll just uh, we'll just knock them loose real easy They usually come right out just one little tap like that We got the control arm loose, we got the tie rod end loose, and we're loose from our ball joint down below. I've got my 13 millimeter on this hub here, we're going to take it out, hang on. And then we're going to come straight off and onto my cooler here, I'm going to have to set you down. If you can see. There we go. Again, we just don't want any stress uh, on any of that stuff. So here's our hub here, a hub assembly for the four-wheel drive. And uh, see, we're able to just move it out of the way. That gives us access to this lower ball joint. So while we're here, we might as well get this guy 
pressed out and uh, then we'll concentrate we'll move this shock out of the way and then we'll get our control arm removed we'll take a quick peek at our ball joint press uh, I was able to get this on loan from our local O'Reilly's so they just put a uh, charge on your credit card for what this thing's worth and then when you bring it back they uh, give you the credit back no charge at all so uh, we've got different size collets here that we'll use to press the ball joint off and on big c-clamp type arrangement and then some bases to keep everything from flopping around the first thing we need to do is take off our little circlip here we're just going to spread that out with some needle nose pliers and get it out of our way there we go then we're going to set up our ball joint press and uh, press this guy out of here so the way to do that is to get the big collet that fits around uh, the bottom flange without any interference and then uh, for the bases we've got one with a small hole and we've got one with a large hole so we're going to use the large hole so it'll slip over this ball joint and so we'll use it in that configuration right there we'll get our clamp set up it down we've got a 22 millimeter socket set up there so we should be able to just tighten this and uh, away we go in our new ball joint we're gonna to have to press it in from the bottom so we're using the collet that actually matches the lip so not the uh, big guy that's down there the next one up so we'll set this up in a fashion where we use this <clears throat> bottom plate here and uh, we'll close off the top plate with another collet so let's see if we can use this one to close it off and then uh, we'll crank everything up okay to start with we're using the collet that fits this the bottom piece there and then over the top over the big opening I'm using the other plate so let's see uh, let's see if we can get this moving and we'll have to change it about midway we've got our new lower ball joint installed here and uh, I will say that uh, the Master Pro as I was pressing it in the lip under here cracked so I took it back and got a Moog the guy at O'Reilly said they have the Master Pros returned every once in a while with the same exact problem they're just not made very well the Moogs are about four more dollars so thought it was worth it didn't want to sit here and press joints in all day and uh, so we got it we're going to move on now we go to the control arm so the first thing we're going to be doing is there's three 15 millimeter nuts up here that we have to remove and there's one big one down here <clears throat> that i believe is a 30 millimeter that's a big honker so we're going to take this guy off and then we'll take those uh, three up there off <clears throat> I'm up on top of the shock tower now. <clears throat> we got three 15 millimeter bolts that got to come out of the way, or sorry, nuts that have to come out of the way. So we're taking those off. The first two are pretty easy to get at. The other ones on the back side there, a little bit more challenging, but no big deal. I'm using a, a wrench here rather than a socket because uh, if you use a deep well socket, the socket, you almost want to take out this uh, inner fender here. Uh, just because of everything gets in the way if you just use a wrench it takes you uh, maybe an extra 30 seconds or so but uh, you know then you don't have to worry about taking that whole mess out we are in the engine compartment now and our final bolt is a little bit easier to get to from the top side than the bottom so we're just gonna swing our wrench in there get it out and uh, we'll remove yeah. the shock it's, uh... Everything loose. We'll just scoot our shock out of the way, and uh, now we can concentrate on these bolts up here for the control arm. So we'll take both of those out.
those are on the uh, control arms there those are a 21 millimeter so I'm going to keep my hardware uh, separate each side just you know want to put everything back like it should be here we have our used ball joint or control arm really but you can see the ball joint is just you know loose in there it doesn't have too much of a rattle to it but there's just a tick of one and the new ball joint hang on I gotta step on it just stiff as hell so that's how they're supposed to be you shouldn't be able to just grab them and pull them around like that so that's definitely worn out we'll get to uh, putting this in reverse order of how it all came out don't forget as you're reassembling to insert your grease zerk before you get uh, your upper end all together there or you won't be able to get that in place that's awfully difficult uh, the other thing uh, you'll have to refer to your owner's manuals and that sort of thing for all the torque specs. Looks like we could probably use some tie rod ends on this uh, truck as well, but uh, you have to refer to your owner's manuals or your repair manuals for torque specs on all of these. You want to be sure that all your bolts are tightened properly to spec, and sometimes that changes year by year, so I'd rather not go through that on the 05 here. One of the final things I do is go through and torque all my lug nuts to 100 pounds and uh, you know we always remember to store our torque wrench with no pressure on the spring that's important all right that is it for this repair Don't let me go.